Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Well, it's Wednesday for me. It may not be Wednesday by the time you listen to this, but that is okay. Because either way, you are tuned into the Personal Stylist Podcast, and I am Sydney. I am excited to have you here. If you are just tuning in, we are kind of in the middle of a series. We are talking about the definition of a personal stylist, what background you need to have as a personal stylist. And this episode and next weeks are kind of going to continue that um, thread on the things that you should or shouldn't have or do as a stylist. So this is episode 31, and we are going to talk about the types of services you should be offering as a personal stylist. So let's get into it. When I first started as a personal stylist, uh, back in probably 2014, I was um, styling as very much a side hustle to my full-time day job and just kind of figuring out all of the things about personal styling and that it was a business and that I could actually do it. Um, And I offered all of the services. (laughs) So an actual laundry list of services that I have offered are closet cleanouts, outfit creation, personal shopping, a service called Stylist on Call, a style quickie, which I don't even think I sold one of those, a secondhand style subscription that was actually very popular, a lot of work, but very popular. Um, I had a virtual stylist add-on for like $25. Like what? I don't even understand what that is. Um, I had lookbooks as a separate service that people could buy. I had event styling. I had a mix and match menu that had a $250 style consultation. And then I had a whole future future service idea document that looking at that now just gives me anxiety. So all of these services, like there's nothing wrong with any of these services and they all worked okay, right? The services I offered were exactly what I had been taught in my certification class. Um, Do a closet cleanse, go shopping, create outfits. And then I added, I experimented and I took away various other services over the years. But the two biggest mistakes that I see stylists make and that I made myself as evidenced by this list are number one, offering too many service options and then customizing them for each client. And two, letting their clients pick and choose what services they do when. So let's talk a little bit why I don't think this process and approach to your services works well for you or your clients. So number one, when you have a lot of different service options, and I see this a lot when I go into certain, or just go into stylist websites and go to their service pages, there's like a laundry list of 10 or 15 different services. When there are a lot of services on your website, it is going to be very confusing to the client. If it is at all confusing to you, know that it is 10 times more confusing for your client. And what having more services does is it actually stops and hinders people from booking because they fall into what is called decision paralysis. So think about the last time you were faced with a decision and there were a lot of options. So for me, this happens when I am on Amazon and I am looking for notebooks. This literally happened to me yesterday. Um, There are, I don't even know, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of notebook options on Amazon. It is very overwhelming to go through all of those and compare, well, this one has this, that one has that, it's this price, but this one has five more pages. And then this one, oh, but this one is lined. Oh, this one is graph paper. And then you, I just, I stop, I give up. I'm like, I can't, there's too many. I throw up my hands, I shut the laptop and I go notebook less, right? That is what's happening to your clients when they are looking on your website for how to work with you, which that's great, right? If they got there to your website and they're looking at your services, that's where you want them to be. But if then they get overwhelmed by all of the options or if they don't understand where to start first, then they may just stop. They may not even get to that point of reaching out to you to setting up a style consultation, to talking to you, to even starting to understand where they should begin. So when you have so much, it's going to prevent them or could prevent them from actually taking the next step. 
And number two is letting clients pick and choose what services they do and when. So this is least helpful for our clients because as humans, we crave processes, simplifications, boundaries, and someone guiding us through a process who can give us feedback and course correct in the moment. So when we let our clients just go to our website and arbitrarily pick what service they want without kind of speaking to us or knowing that they should go through steps one, two, and three, again, they get confused. And for you as the stylist, what happens when you have all of these services that are awesome, but they're separate and independent of each other, you are creating a like process crash <laughs> for yourself. And this is what happened to me. I used to offer all of my services a la carte. But what I found was happening is there was no clear path. Well, there was a path in my head, right? Oh, they would get their closet cleaned out and then we would um, go shopping and then we would create outfits and then they would buy a lookbook. But that isn't always what works for our clients, right? Because when we are, we are talking about humans and we are talking about psychology. So most clients opt for the easy, cheaper service the first in a lineup of services because they think they can manage the other services on their own once they get a little bit of that taste. And for some clients, that is very, very true. They are super capable, but for others, it's just not possible. What I was finding in my business is that clients would book a closet cleanse and it would be really awesome. It'd be really great. And then they would never book the next steps, which would be shopping and or making outfits, or they would book an outfit session and then we'd be in their closet cleaning out their closet and taking up all of our time cleaning the closet when we should be making outfits because the closet was messy and they had things that needed to go. So by having services as all a cart and letting the clients pick and choose, again, we're just leaving them open to deciding what's the best path for them. Instead, we as stylists really understand the best path and process for our clients. And we also understand the best methods in which we ourselves work. So as a personal stylist, the services that I recommend that you offer are process-based services that build on each other for your new clients and then a different process or a little more a la carte for your existing clients once they're already in, once they already have a baseline of you working with them. I strongly recommend that you ditch your a la carte services and implement a signature service process that you do with all of your new clients. So I wanna do a little note here, and then I'm gonna read you a um, quote from a stylist who did this and share with you the results that she got. So quick note, I recommend strongly a personal styling process and then having services if you would like to, like photo shoots, editorial, event styling, branding, or magazine services, those are separate because they are not a personal styling process you are working through, right? If you are helping someone choose their outfits for a photo shoot, that is almost its own separate different process that you're going through because you don't need to clean out somebody's closet to help them choose outfits for a photo shoot. So that's another process you can develop. But for the personal styling process, when someone wants to transform themselves through their wardrobe, that is a separate service. And I wanna also do another quick note is that your services, and we talk about this a lot in my programs, in the business bootcamp, in my membership, they can look however you want. So we're not gonna go into a lot of detail here on the process, but know they can be any length of time, any shortness of time, they can be on any day, they can be any one service. You don't even have to offer this whole stream of quote unquote traditional personal styling services, like closet clean out, outfits, shopping, et cetera. And that is something that I don't think we talk about as personal stylists. There's very much a notion of this is how you do it. Um, these particular services comprise your offerings. And I think that as a business owner, you have the luxury and freedom and almost responsibility to create the services that you want to offer. And so that is actually a little tangent, which I will talk about a lot in this free webinar I'm teaching, which I will talk about in a second. 
But if you are going to offer um, a series of personal styling services, then I highly recommend that you do a signature service, process-based service. So let's get to that quote. Um, this is a quote from a stylist who went through my programs and she says, quote, after listening to Sydney's Instagram and YouTube live about a la carte services, I changed up my package and created one seamless offering to a new potential client and she said, yes. $899, that is $899 for a four week signature program. That is amazing. When you are able to package your services as a process, you are going to provide a transformation for your client that is going to be so much better than if they just did your services piecemeal a la carte. And can you imagine for yourself as a stylist what it is like to book a service for $899 for a month's worth of work? and have that type of money come into your business, especially if you are used to kind of one-off services that are in that 150 to maybe 350 range. Imagine what this type of income can do for you and your business. So let me know, are you willing to try this? Does this sound interesting? Is this different than anything else you've heard? If you try this, let me know, send me a comment. I would love to know. And if you are interested in learning more, about all of the processes that I believe successful stylists should have in their business, specifically this signature service process, I would love to invite you to a free webinar that I am teaching tomorrow, Thursday, September 17th, 2020, at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I will be sharing five secrets that all professional stylists use in their business. If you can't make it live, I would really encourage you to sign up anyway. You'll be able to get the follow-up emails. You can watch the replay live for a week. And you will learn about how you can take the next steps to grow your business through my signature bootcamp course and my personal stylist membership, The Founders Club. So onwards and upwards, happy styling, happy processing, and I will see you next week on The Personal Stylist Podcast.